there's a lot of accomplishments that blacks have done, not only from 1926, but all the way back in the days of Moses. If you look at Moses, if you look at Moses' family, if you just use your imagination, Moses' wife, for example. Now, she wasn't blue-eyed and blonde hair. She's from the area of the earth where the sun shines the brightest. So it kind of, or she shines the darkest. <laughs> so it kind of makes me think that she might be close to my complexion or maybe close to my wife's complexion. <laughs> but all through the Bible, you find that there was somebody black. It was somebody black. Now, they don't want to say black, and I was in the history books, and I saw where some theologians have traced the black Americans way back, and one theologian went as far as to say that there's only four nationalities. He said there were the black man, the white man, African, and the other one uh, slips my mind. But after studying that, he went on to say that there is no pure white man. Now, I'm not trying to be prejudiced. I'm not a prejudiced person. I'm just telling you the things that I've studied about. It said there is no pure white person. He said they're con combined of so many different nationalities. And then he went on to say that one thing, he said that most Caucasians fear black people. He went on to go way back into the day. The reason why a lot of slaves were in slavery was because of fear. If you read the Bible, you find out that in, in, in Genesis, the Egyptians saw that the children of Israelite were so many. They say they, are, they outnumber us. They're more than we are. And we need to do something to keep them in bondage. At least our enemies come upon us and they side with the enemies and overtake us. They were fearful of what the children of Israel might do to them. And out of fear, they put them in bondage. And then if you move on up a little bit further, when slavery, when they said they went over to Africa and captured some Africans, brought them back to America. Now, they said that they took black men from Africa. Now, how close is Africa to Egypt? How close is Africa to Jerusalem? How close is Africa to us right now? Now, if you look in the mirror, you'll see you're closer to Africa than you think. In part of my study, I found out that many black men were very intellectual. I found out that many of them were very smart. We may not give them, well, like, let me rephrase that. They didn't get the credit that they deserved. The white man wanted to be in fear, you know. Every time I say that loud, it makes me think about Malcolm X. The white man, now, I'm not a prejudiced person. I, I'm, I'm going to try to... <laughs> What he was trying to say was that in order to keep the Afro-American person in bondage was to make them think that they're less than what they are. And one way to make them think that was to even keep them in slavery. Even after Lincoln had came out with the Emancipation Proclamation, slavery was still going on. Even after he had declared it, you know, that slaves should be free there were still people of a different nation, yet holding on to the Afri African-American as slaves. And then there were so many slaves that were afraid to be free. Therefore, they held on to their master's hand. And I see so many people wearing the earring in their the piercings, in their nose, in their ears, uh, in their eyebrows. And I even saw that some of that came from the, the slaves who didn't want to be free. 
They were pierced. They took piercings to indicate that they were yet slaves by choice, so to speak. And when I see people wearing these piercings, I'm, I'm only reminded of that, a slave by choice. You see, sometimes, you know, we put ourselves in bondage. Sometimes we take the, the role of being Christians, but yet we, some of us are yet bound. You see, Jesus had already loosed the shackles. Way back in the Bible days, he set us all free. Trying to condense down to my 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Help myself. <laughs> some of us try to go as far as to create gangs. Most of you are familiar with the gang banging these days. Gang banging didn't start just when we were born, but gang banging was way back, way back in the days of slavery. I was reading about one guy. He had started, he had gotten pretty tough. He had did studies, the black man. He had studied, and you know, back, black, back in the days of slavery, the black man wasn't allowed to read a book. He wasn't supposed to be educated. You see, they had to keep him down where they can keep their eyes on him. And if, if he had any ounce of smarts, he was persecuted. If he was found reading, he was persecuted. If he was found writing, he got a whipping. Not a whooping, a whipping. You see, they tried to keep the black man in bondage. But once slavery had been abolished, and then those by choice decided to yet be in slavery. After reading this, it made me think differently. It made me think about the Christianity, the Christian walk. You see, I found out that a lot of us, you know, we have quite a bit of power that we don't even know we have. Just by being a Christian. Now, I was in a church one day and a man was being delivered from unclean spirits. And the spirit spoke out of the man. And he told him, he said, he said, these people are afraid of me. And the preacher asked him, he said, who are you? And he spoke boldly. He was a little kid, actually. The kid was about that wide. And he had a spirit of glutton. And that spirit spoke out of the boy and said, that I'm the same spirit that enticed the people to hang Jesus on the cross. And the preacher said, well, you know you have no power here. And he said, oh, I got all kind of power. The preacher told him, he said, sit up. He sat up. He said, lay down. He laid down. He said, sit up. Lay down. He did that for about 30 seconds, just demonstrating the power that he had over the devil. Now, the preacher went on to get into it. He began to sweat. And every time he sweat, a drop would fall on that kid, that little boy. And when that drop of sweat would fall on him, he began to holler and scream. And he said, even your sweat burn. And the preacher said, that's just a demonstration of the power that worketh in me. He was speaking of the power of Christ that worketh in him. And I say a lot of us are bound because we're bound by choice. You see, there's freedom in sanctification. There's freedom in Jesus. There's freedom in the walls of the church. There's freedom when you walk in that door. But the only time you'll receive the freedom is when you accept it, believe it, and hold on to it. You see, we, we are allowed ourselves to be bound to certain things of our era. We become bound to prejudice because of what was done to us. But sometimes there comes a time in our life we have to let it go. Even the prejudice. You see, I found out that even us being in slavery, I found out that God allowed it. You see, nothing happens that God don't allow. Nothing happens that God don't allow. Now, if you look back in the book of Job, when Job, when the devil came before, the angels came before God, and the devil came with him, and God asked Job, he said, have you considered my servant Job? And Job, and the devil told him, he said, well, he said, yeah, he got a hedge around him. He said, if you take that hedge around him, he said, I could do something to him. And Job found, the Lord gave Job the ability to stand. And it was just a matter of Job accepting Christ in his heart, believing God as God. 
Now, when the Lord used Job, I used to, used to like to wear my suspenders when I talk about that. Because it was just like God bragging on Job to the devil. It was like he put his hands up under his suspenders and said, have you considered my boy? This is my boy. He was proud of Job. Reason being because he knew that Job wouldn't bow down and curse him. He allowed the devil to attack him, but he told the devil, you can do what you want, but don't touch his body. And then later he told him, he said, now you can touch him. He said, but you can't touch his life. Now, it's the same thing even now. God wants to brag on somebody here tonight. He wants to brag on you because your day is coming. One day you're going to have to stand up even before the enemy. And will God be able to put his hands under his suspenders and say, you consider it my boy, you consider it my girl? Or will he be able to say, well, uh, not right now. You see, but we never know when we're going to stand up against the enemy. Sometimes we can walk out this door and there's opposition. Sometimes there's opposition right in these four walls, right in the church. Some of us are bound by choice. Reason because we know better, meaning that we should do better. To whom much is given, much is required. That's what the Bible says. It says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. When we don't study, when we don't try to pray and try to find out how to get closer to God and to combat the enemy, we almost become slaves by choice. The Bible says that to whom you've given yourself over, his slave you are, to obey. Now, the enemy can't just come in and take control of you. You have to allow him. You have to allow him. Back in the days of the Bible, do you know that most people understood salvation? They walked the face of the earth. Most people feared some sort of God. And most people feared the devil. But I see that these days, uh, people remind me of the man in the Bible, who the Bible said he feared not man, nor regarded God. But some of us have that type of attitude is that we just don't care. But don't you know that the eyes of the Lord are in all places, beholding your good as well as your evil. Some of us are bound by choice. Some of us haven't loosened the shackles yet. Even though the key is still in the shackle, you can be loose anytime you want. But you're chosen to be a slave. You've chosen to be a slave to the enemy. It was your choice to make a decision concerning salvation. The Bible says, choose ye this day whom you will serve. And some of us have attempted to make the choice of choosing God. We've allowed God to come into our life. We allowed God to, to rule. Then time went on. We began to get relaxed. We began to get ease in Zion. It kind of reminds me of the song that says, Zion used to moan. When Zion stopped moaning, then things got bad. Zion used to pray. Zion used to pray. And when Zion stopped praying, things got bad. You used to pray. You used to moan. But when you stopped praying, when you stopped moaning, things got bad. Years ago, I had a cousin who was in an accident. He was in a bad accident. Some of you know him, Craig Sanders. Craig was in a car, and his buddy was speeding. They were racing. And they were racing down the street on 127th Street. When I don't know what happened, they hit a bump or something, the car flipped over and over and over, and it tumbled down the street. And when the car finally stopped, the driver had a dislocated hip and a broken leg. But Craig had his fractured skull, his skull fractured. He was in the hospital for, I don't remember how long it was, but I would get off work and go visit Craig. And I'd get there and he'd be laying in the bed, 
just staring. And I had an aunt. She'd be there every day. Every time I get there, she would be there. And she'd be walking around and she'd just be, mm, mm, mm. She didn't say a whole lot. She just kept moaning. She said, mm. And I went to the, to the jail, to, to the hospital to see him. And after about three months, my aunt would still be there. Mm, mm, mm. And then after seven months, Craig's still in a coma. I went to visit him. She was there. When I walked through the door, she looked at me and she was smiling. And then she started crying. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, mm. She was trying to talk, but only a moan would come out. And then she pointed at him and she said, look. And I looked at him. He looked at me this time. And she said, he spoke. I said, what do you mean? She said, she started crying and she started laughing at the same time. She said, he sat up and he said, change the channel. Now, all she did was moan, and then I realized that her moan was her prayer. She wasn't praying out loud. She was moaning her prayer. She was, mm, in my mind, I would think she was saying, Jesus, healing. In my mind, I would hear her saying, Jesus, let him get up. Jesus, fix his head, fix his skull. Jesus, restore his memory. Jesus, restore his heart. Jesus, restore his mind. Jesus, give him back what he lost. Jesus, Jesus, rise him up and set him free. My aunt used to moan. She, mm, mm. And Zion used to moan. When Zion stopped moaning, things got bad. Some of us are slave by choice. Sometimes we have to realize just who we are. We have power over the enemy. We don't have to live in bondage. We don't have to hold on to the things that held us down. We don't have to walk in misery. We don't have to walk in poverty. We don't have to be slaves to the devil. Jesus has set us free a long time ago. He set us free a long time ago. I believe if you just start moaning, mm, Jesus help me. Mm, Jesus forgive me mm, Jesus wash me mm, Jesus set me free mm, Jesus saved my sister Jesus saved my brother mm, Jesus saved my parents I believe that if you start moaning you see because some of us are afraid to pray and op openly but if you moan people don't know what you're talking about sometimes we got to realize the power that works in us the power that we have the power that works in you. God has given you a power. God has given it to you. And all we have to do is get up and start using it. We have to get up and use it. Martin Luther King said that a man can't ride your back if it's bent. He said all you have to do is stand up, straighten your back out. You stand up, straighten your back out. And remember how you used to moan when you first got saved. And remember, take your mind back to when the Lord first saved you. Take your mind back to that power that you had. The Bible says this. It says, ask and it shall be given. Some of us are afraid to ask for some things because we're afraid we might get it. Some of us are afraid to ask for power because we might get that power. Because some of us know that the Bible says, whom much is given, much is required. And you see, the power that you do have, it's up to you to use it the right way. There's coming a time when it won't be so easy to walk the streets, according to the Bible. This is not me prophesying, this is the Bible. There's coming a time when you won't be able to open up your Bible in public. That's if we still be living, if Jesus don't be here yet. There's come a time when the Word of God will be persecuted just for people preaching. And if you think back, it's almost here already. They don't want us talking about 
certain things in the pulpit. A preacher is not supposed to talk about homosexuality in the church. But God hates sin. He doesn't hate the person, he hates the sin. So all these things have come to pass already. The Bible lets us know that these are the last days. Now, how long are the last days? I can't tell you. But one thing I can tell you is there'll come a time when you're going to have to moan. There'll come a time when you're going to have to call on the Lord. And when you call on him, you have to have that confidence that he's there to hear you. You have to have the confidence to know that he hears you when you cry. He hears your call. He hears your moan. You have to have the faith in him to realize that he's right there waiting for you. I saw a cartoon one day. In the cartoon, there was this bodyguard standing, guarding the kid. If the kid tilted his head, the bodyguard would go get him to somebody. If the kid tilted his head the other way, the bodyguard would go that way to take care of the kids who were bullying this kid. And it's almost like we got Jesus as our bodyguard. When the devil comes to us, sometimes you just moan. Mm, Jesus, go take care of him. Sometimes we have to realize just who we are. Sometimes we have to realize who we, where we came from. You see, it's more than just black history. It's Christianity. Christ died on the cross for all mankind, not just for the white man, the black man, the Jews. He died on the cross for all of us. He died on the cross for all of us. There comes a time when you have to make the choice within your mind and within yourself. Will I live for God or will I straddle the fence? Will I compromise or will I live a holy life? Will I be saved at church but hang with my unsaved friends at work? Will I be saved at home? Or will I be saved every now and then at home? See, one thing I found out and I heard my, one of my grandchildren say. She told her mama, she said, I do what you do. She said, I see what you do. What I see you do, that, that's what I do. If it's all right for you to do it, how come I can't do it? Our children pattern their lives after us. Sometimes it's not by choice. Sometimes it appears to be uh, something, you know, genetic. I was one day, when my son was young, I was disciplining him. And as I got through with him, I could only see my father disciplining me the same manner. Then I went in the bathroom, and I was, it was early in the morning, and I began to shave. And I looked in the mirror, and I put my glasses on. And guess who I saw? I saw my father looking right back at me. Our children become what we teach them to be. We can teach them black history, that's good. We can teach them where we came from, that's good. We can teach them how to make a living, that's good. We can teach them how to be good to their neighbors, that's good. But we need to teach them how to live a holy life. We need to teach them how to live a sanctified life. We need to teach them how to live for the Lord. Because one day, we're going to have to stand account for all of our actions. Because one day Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, it won't be time to try to teach your children. But God is going to hold you accountable for your children because you should have taught them. Then he's going to hold you accountable for you because some of us are slaves by choice. Come on, stand to your feet. A slave by choice. An indentured servant. Chose to be 
bound. Chose to allow the enemy's shackles to be upon us. Chose to have to drag around these chains, the weight and the ball. A chosen decision. Decision that you make sometimes can be devastating. When you choose to play with the enemy, the bad part about that, as Elder Walker often says, you stop playing, but he don't. You want to stop playing, but he's still at it. You stop fighting, but the devil's still fighting. A decision that you have to make and live by is a decision concerning your salvation. It's a decision that you have to make concerning you. Your mother can't stand before God when it comes to salvation for you. She can only lead you to the Lord. It's up to you to make the choice to the children. In history, it's taught, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Now, what that meant is that they couldn't force them to make the decision. But what he was saying, as far as I'm concerned, if you live in my house, you're going to at least act like you know the Lord. In our house... We have six kids, six children, my wife and I. And out of the six, too many of them don't like to come to spend the night, especially on a Saturday. Because on Saturday, on Sunday, we get up and go to church. And one of the rules is we don't care how old you are. You come to our house, you're going to church. If you're going to spend the night on a Saturday night, you're getting up and going to church. Or you're getting up and going home, getting out of our house. That's been a rule since we've been married. A slave by choice. A slave by choice. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again for your spirit. We thank you, Lord God, for yet being present in this place even now, God. We thank you, Lord God, for your son, God, for dying on the cross. We thank you, Lord God, for black history. We thank you, Lord God, for things that you've done for us. But God, we see ourselves right now. The spotlight is on us. We're standing before you, God. God, we stand before you naked. We're open to you, God. Because there's nothing that we can hide from you, Lord. We can't even hide our thoughts. But you know our thoughts are far off. We can't hide from you, God. We stand before you naked under the light. And we ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name, to give us one more chance. Give us another chance. Give us another chance, Lord God, to get things right. To get things right with you. Even though we've already accepted you as our Savior, some of us have chosen to be slaves, even by choice, to the enemy. To the devices that he's attached to us, that we've allowed him to attach to us. But God, I ask you right now in Jesus' name to turn the TV in our minds on, God. Turn the screen on in our hearts and let us see ourselves. Let us see ourselves, God. And let us see ourselves the way you see us, God. Let us see us how you see us. Let us see the filth that's within us, God. Let us see the dirt that we try to hide. Let us see the lies that we tell. Let us see the anger that we abhor, abhor. Let us see it all, God. And then, God, give us a heart to repent. Give us a mind to repent, God. Give us a mind to moan. Give us a mind, Lord. Give us a will, Lord. Give us a heart, Lord. A heart toward you, God. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. God, just come back into our hearts once again. Help us to live a life that we can't live by ourselves. Help us not to be up and down with salvation, but help us, Lord God, to be mighty, Lord God. Like a tree planted by the water that can't be moved. When the wind blows, Lord, help us to yet stand, God. 
When opposition come, Lord, help us to yet stand, God. God, help us, Lord God, to stand up, God, in these evil days, Lord. Cover us with the blood, God, in Jesus' name, God. God, I pray, God, that you bind every demon, every devil, every contrary spirit, God. Every spirit, God, that's here to hinder your people, Lord God. Every spirit that's had us bound, God. We bind them in the name of Jesus, God. In Jesus' name. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood 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 of Jesus is against you. You have no place here. We take authority over you right now. And we command you in the name of Jesus to hold your peace and let God's people go. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every demon, every foul and unclean spirit, we bind you right now. We take authority over you right now. We take authority over you right now. You can't hide. The blood of Jesus is against you. You can't hide from the blood. We see you, and you can't hide. We bind you in Jesus' name, command you to loose God's people right now. Loose your hold in the name of Jesus. Loose your hold in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, we ask you to just come in once again, Lord. Refill us with your spirit, God. Give us a closer walk with you, Lord God. Give us a closer relationship with you, Lord. Teach us, God, to build relationship, God. Teach us to share our relationship with others, God, with you, God. Teach us, Lord God, to teach our families, God. Put it in us, Lord God, to go back, Lord God, to that same day when you first saved us, God. Put that burning down back in our hearts, God. Put that zeal back in us, God. Put that determination back in us, God. Put the praying spirit back in us, God. Put fasting back in us, God. Put witnessing back in us, Lord. Put praying down in our hearts, God. Put it in us to lift up one another, Lord God. Put it in us to praise you, Lord God. To lift you up, God, even when we're feeling down, God. Put it in us to pray, God, and to trust you, Lord God, and to believe you, God, to do just what you said, God. For you said you, you'll never leave us, God, and you'll never forsake us, God. Even in hard times, God, help us understand that you're yet with us, God, and help us to stand, God. Help us to stand, Lord God. Help us to stand, Lord. Help us to stand, God. In the name of Jesus, God, help us to stand. Help us, God. Help us, Lord God. Put our trust back in you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you for it, God. We thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Receive our pastor.